Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, recently we've been feeling an immense love for Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam. We don't know where this love has come from. Can you please explain? Well, I would imagine from all our teachings. That's all we talk about is all the teachings about, is all the, the practices about. If you accompany those who have a love, then their love is contagious. And everything they do and everything they wear and every act that they, they do and represent, they represent the, the heart of that reality. That their reality is in, on this earth at all times. Their ashaqeen re represent them. So that's an immense love. When you interact with them, this is the whole talk from tonight. That those whom represent that love, they're from that garden and they represent the garden. As soon as you enter into that garden, you begin to fall in love with its fragrance. It's not the fragrance of the, of the shaykh. But it's the garden in which he represents of the Muhammadan haqqaiqs and the, and the love and the ishq of Ahlul Bayt and the holy companions of Sayyidina Muhammad So as a result then we begin to smell that fragrance. They're like atari, as soon as you come into their store all their teachings are like beautiful fragrances. And before you know it you put so many samples you leave smelling like a paradise and then you go home wondering, why I smell like paradise? Oh you were just fragranced by all their teachings and their presence. So alhamdulillah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum shaykh. <coughs> Wa alaykum as salaam uh, Shaykh, does using hand sanitizer invalidate the wudu? I understand they contain alcohol. Yeah. Better to use the non-alcohol. There's so many non-alcoholic uh, hand sanitizers but yeah I would imagine that when you're trying to keep yourself clean with water and wudu for salah, last thing you want to do is rub alcohol all over yourself. And if you have spiritual practices you'll immediately feel your hands are on fire because spiritual beings begin to attack you. So it takes away that protection. InshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Sayyidi, when we get up from sujood we feel like our body becomes heavy. Why does that happen? When you get up from sujood you feel like your body became heavy? Maybe all your food was in your stomach and <laughs> it depends when your sujood was. <coughs> A blood rushes to the heads of people. I mean there's many reasons yeah. out of the physical but when spiritual sujood and energy comes and a connection is made in sujood then there's a, a tremendous energy that they come very energized out of the, that sujood. So if, if that's spiritual, that the energy in the sujood and, and to make the connection in sujood and cry and, and make the, the closeness and proximity, they come out very energized. Just they come up a little bit sore maybe from their legs but the heaviness is maybe the blood rushes to the head, the stomach from Ramadan when they eat too much they go into sujood and your whole stomach is moving forward and making yourself feel a little bit heavy on, on the return upward. But spiritually it should be very powerful. The powerful connections they don't uh, feel the heaviness when coming up, they feel a, a very energized state. Because we said before the sujood is the closest to your reality. When Allah will bring your reality to you it will be coming from an ocean unknown and then meeting into the sujood in which you can see yourself and that's a very strong and powerful spiritual reality. InshaAllah. These are the months also of zakat and, and uh, zakat al-fitr to give the 10, 15 dollars per family member to purify and to perfect any imperfections in the family's fast or individual's fast and those fitr have already been distributed. We're distributing throughout Vancouver, we distributed throughout Los Angeles food centers and throughout uh, Pakistan. In our, in our fitr. Fitr for us is always we advance give so that they'll be celebrating and, and given out to families before 
Eid al-Fitr but each individual has to give their fitr before the, the end of the… before the, the Eid, preferably before all of that so that it can be consumed by the people and enjoyed for Eid inshaAllah. And zakat, anyone who wants to give on the Qadr nights the zakat that they owe inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah How much is recommended for us to share with the shaykh via help me? What is the right balance so as not to bother the shaykh with our personal problems? Yeah, none of the problems. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, not, you're not to use that as a, as a complaining we described and there's other talks. And I think also in the, in the timeless reality that don't, don't let in our lives and this is not for just this person but for anyone, don't allow your life to, to be manipulated by shaitan and he loves to manipulate someone's life to open a, a faucet of complaints. Because in the end if you're on a path of annihilation there's only but Allah. So who are you complaining about? Are you complaining what Allah gave you in life, what condition He put you into life, why He told other people to do to this in life or to do that to you in life? In the end it renders itself back to Allah that you're complaining about. And that's all shaitan likes, please sit and complain with somebody. And they find a willing ear and just complain, 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 doesn't make it go down. It actually makes them want to complain more because then they'll find a complaint about everyone. They'll complain about work, they'll complain about home, they'll complain about the center, they'll complain about the food, they, it won't stop. So that's not the, the way of tariqah. The tariqah is just basically, Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh please help me I, I need to learn how to do my meditation, we send you the article. Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh I'm feeling good, alhamdulillah making connection, had these uh, concerns. And very, very in general, if there's a shaykh, he doesn't need to know the whole detail of your life's in and outs and all of these things for what? He works for the same one who sent you all these, right? So he works for Allah Allah knows your condition. The, this is an ocean of faith. The one whom put you through those events and wrote for you your life is the same one who inspired you sit and listen to him now. And then he's the same one who inspires us, I want you to talk about this subject. So it's been answered and told all in the ocean of Allah So then this is just the sign of humility that I took a shaykh, please help me, please pray for me, shaykh this is uh, happening to me, inshaAllah pray for me, inshaAllah it got better, give good information. Make yourself to be known by the shaykh, not complaining but to be known. Make sure that he sees your name on the shop, make sure he sees your name on the charity, make sure he sees your name posting articles because he's very active shaykh, he's participating in everything. He sees everybody's format, he sees that this one commented, this one posted, this one did this, this one did that. That's so that you're under their nazar and we said before they're like mobile phone. The one who controls my eyes and my heart and my ears and my fingers and my feet is watching and through my eyes they watch and they see the one who's participating. So you draw near to the shaykh by your activities not by emailing complaints. That, that draws you away from the shaykh. The one who sends lots of emails and complaints they actually push away from the shaykh because you're offending Allah. Because Allah is saying, oh here's one of those complainers again and they complain, 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 complain and it never gets better, that should become like a vehicle for shaitan to destroy their lives. So the one who draws near to Allah is through their good deeds, they're doing all these amazing deeds and they're everywhere. You'll see their name on everything, you'll see them begin to support and, and to help to write the, the, the articles and post articles. Um, the post uh, Facebook postings, you know, are, are people who are moderating, the same names you see moderating, they're donating, they're buying books, they're buying stuff at the store, they're supporting, they're going online, they're posting like 20 posts a day for Wells, they're posting on this site, that site, this site. Imagine all the different platforms we have and these people are 
moderating and doing all of this service, it's immense, immense. So of course they're under the nazar of the shaykhs and nazar of Prophet But somebody just coming and, and wanting to complain to help me is not going to draw near to the tariqah, it just, it just distances people from that reality, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, please forgive my ignorance, but was wondering, can we attend these molids during itikaf? Inshallah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. This is uh, this is more powerful than your itikaf. Yeah, that's when you realize, you know, that your practices don't lift you. Your awrad doesn't lift you. The things that you do, they don't lift you. Had they lifted you then you would have understood that reality. What lifts you is that when you acknowledge, I'm nothing and when I'm nothing I want to be with them and by keeping my company with them I'll be lifted. By keeping my khidmat with them I'll be lifted. By my service of what I'm doing it's their du'as that will lift me, it's their one dollar matchbox that will get you into paradise. All the zikr you want to do and all the practices you think you're doing, if you think that will get you into paradise that's a different way. So this is the way of tariqahs, when a لَيْنَ أَنْتَ سُبْحَانِكَ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ This was what was Sayyidina Yunus that glory be to you Allah, I'm an oppressor to myself. Well how an oppressor to himself going to get to any of these realities? That was the whole step in tariqah, glory be to Allah and that I am an oppressor to myself. Then Allah said, do you really believe that? Say, yes, okay go sit with these shaykhs. They deal with people whom are oppressive to themselves and as a result they train them, hold tight, enter our boat and let's go. So these are the, the ways and we said now we have people wanting to do etikaf and all these things, that's good. But if they don't listen, Mawlana Shaykh would describe, you come in and you go out the same, what's the difference? So listening to the shaykhs, listening to guidance, if the shaykh says, we want you to be happy and smiling. You can't go around with a sarcastic smile saying, I'm listening to you, well, what's the purpose of etikaf? When the shaykh is saying that there's something in your character, Allah wants changed. Means make your nature to be loving, to be soft, to be kind. All the etikaf in the world doesn't change that. But people are not hearing these issues. They ignore the small and they think if they go after the big changes will come. There's an expression in English. It's called the devil's in the detail, the devil's in the detail. What does that mean? It means that when you analyze something it's the small details is where you'll find shaitan, right? So anyone who does contracts they look, oh, oh look, look at this sneaky word in here, this sneaky word is going to make a big problem. But the person whom has a character of perfection perfection in the way of Allah when they deal with the shaykhs they try to carry out every bit of the understanding because the detail of that understanding is where they're going to make it or break it. When you take the advice and you generalize his advice you've broken it because you put him as an insignificant, his words were insignificant, his details were insignificant and I paste no value on what he was saying is the just of what's happening. But when we have a significance to the person, every word must have an understanding and a meaning. I try my best to uphold that way and as a result then I become successful and Allah grants sincerity. Then when that person enters into seclusion they enter in with sincerity. Allah takes their perfected character and perfects them. Allah takes their good character and perfects them. But to not really care, not really listen, be sarcastic, 
find spelling errors, find things wrong. When you understood the point of what was being asked of you, just a sarcastic nature, then what, what are they expecting from Allah So, this is a bit delicate and very soft way. We walk very softly to make sure everything is, is good, the character is good. And my listening and my understanding, I'm trying my best to fulfill it. Not to use my brain with his brain but to use my heart and doesn't matter if it's wrong, you get an understanding from it and try your best to, to understand it. And then the character becomes very sincere and then they don't begin to manipulate. Later on if the person wants to then become raised to a, a shaykh or a guide, how could you be a guide when you took all of the minor and changed it and flipped it your own way? By the time it becomes major you have your own complete way that has nothing to do with your shaykh or what he taught. That's where the danger is. InshaAllah but those whom follow with sincerity they kept every detail then their shaykh expanded the realities for them, InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa when we look at the eyes of the shaykh, for example, Shaykh Nazim Haqqani, we feel a sensation in his eyes. What is this? The eyes are the window to the soul. That as soon as you look into his eyes, you're calling his soul. And his soul is present with you, grabs you and dresses you. And that's why shaitans, they can't take that. And they tell you, take the pictures down, don't put pictures in your house because the devil inside of people is not able to, to look at their eyes of awliya. So that's, that's the, the power of it. So when you look into their eyes, you call upon their, their soul, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, when I spend more time in contemplation and avoiding distractions, I realize how much fear I have inside. How do I cope with intense feelings of dread, terror, fear of the future? Yeah, I don't know if you're making the meditation, you're doing the awrad, you're connecting with the shaykh because fear is the opposite of faith. So the real meditation, real connection, real zikr should be increasing faith, not, not increasing uh, fear. Fear is the opposite of, of faith. So when you fear something means that the, there's a lack of the faith. So shaitan is now involved in that and in near the person, whispering to the person, giving anxiety to the person. So it means then their connection is not strong in their muraqabah because the stronger the connection, the more distance shaitan has to keep away from the waswas, right? If the connection is not strong, as soon as you meditate you're hearing the waswas because he's able to come too close. If you're good with your connection, good with the, the connection and the muraqabah, then that waswas pushes, pushes, pushes farther away and as a result then you become more calm, more serene, less anxious and you're hearing the message and not operating from anxiety and manic, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam we recently got introduced to your beautiful teachings through a friend who's uh, your follower but now that friend is claiming to be Mahdi. Is there any way to help this person? Run! <laughs> yeah that, that person and, and many other people are mentally disturbed and attracted. People who have mental disabilities may be attracted to spiritual teachings. That's just a given because it's spiritual teachings, they, they deal with the unseen. So mental issues and mental difficulties attract these types of people. And the main thing is that whoever introduces you focus on the teacher and not the student and keep the connection with the teacher and never the student. That's why we, we warn on the internet, don't interact with these people. One day they call themselves Davastani, the next day they call themselves Mahdi, that they're just, you know, the world has overtaken them. 
These are all just distractions. Don't focus on any people, there is no representation. It's just a matter of connecting with the shaykh and connect your heart and, and take from the knowledges and, and all the teachings. But the danger is when people on the side start teaching and advising and you know when a ship goes down and then takes everyone down with them. So that, that's a sign for people that keep your connection with the shaykh and don't worry about anything else inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How to do zikr with the heart in the awrad? The khafi zikr you do your heart and concentrate and connect through your heart and you do your zikr silently and, and connect. When you do your zikr with Allah you can practice first when you're doing it by tasbih. You go Allah, 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 Allah and then you now just sort of connect and say that you're not going to move your tongue but your tasbih to be like your tongue. So with your tasbih you go, and keep practicing that silently and move your tasbih and lock your tongue. And then eventually you try to use less of the tasbih and just lock your tongue and do your zikr. But for now the intermediate stage is with the tasbih. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Can we pick up bad energy from the kids? Uh, from the kids when they come home from school, yes. Not only pick up bad energy, you pick up their sicknesses. As soon as they go to school everyone in the house is sick. Because they're like a sponge. Right, so as soon as they, they go into an environment with the, the other children and other children are like sponges for their home environment, then all these energies and all of these uh, bacterias and everything can affect you. So yeah, at home you, you take more vitamins when they're going to go to school so that your immune system is up. You make sure that they know how to wash, clean, make sure that they have taweezes so no energy is trying to stick on to them. And when they come home, a uh, nice wash, wash and teach them wudu, wash their face, wash their hands, change their shoes and, and try to get them out of uh, that sort of uh, in environment and calm their energy down. So alhamdulillah a lot of energy work you can do with the kids when you feel that their environment at school is, is, is sort of imposing a difficulty upon them. So everyone to a different area where they live and different energies where they are. So most definitely children are like sponges. So all you have to do is just sort of purify it and clean it and make sure that the child is, is clean from these energies inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can Zamzam be a remedy to cure all affliction including spiritual mental difficulty? Can Zamzam be a cure to clean all? Yeah, I think uh, Zamzam has a immense barakah but everything's in Allah's hands. What Allah wants for somebody to have or not have, then that's in Allah's hands and that's a part of our submission on this path is to submit to Allah's will. We try to do our best and to have the best of character, do the zikrs, the awrads and, and everything else and build our faith. And that which Allah wants us to be cured from with our faith and our good actions then all of the remedies that Prophet brought. So that's like when we have an awrad and somebody asks, Shaykh can I just recite Surah Ikhlas? No, because that's why they gave all the awrad. So you can't use the mind on this. Prophet has black seed oil for one remedy, zamzam and drinking for another remedy and you know, different uh, different healings for different remedies, different salawats for different healings. So it's the whole ocean of realities, it can't be simplified to just one. So it's best to try to do all of them, do all the practices and then alhamdulillah it's in Allah's hands whom He gives shifa and, and what He takes away from the servant and what they keep with patience inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Should we wear all the taweezes on the website? Should we what? Wear we all the taweezes. Yeah, yeah, we. we. 
We have them always on us. Asabu al-Kaf, the Jin Tawis, Naqshbandi Tawis. So we keep them always in our being, on our pocket and by our heart. You have the Tawises on your necklace with the Zulfiqar. So yeah, they're, they're made to, to wear. Now are you going to tape it on your forehead and walk around? No. But that's why it comes with a, a laminated thing from my pocket. Some people you ask them, where's your tawis? They put like in their wallet. So why are you putting in your wallet? It's not supposed to guard your money, it's supposed to guard you. So keep it upon yourself, keep it on your car, keep it in the home, in the bedrooms, inshaAllah. This is an immense protection. The jinn tawis is, is for, for the unseen energies and Nashbandi tawis is the barakah of the Nashbandi tawis and the Nashbandi awliya. Sab al-Kaf is a tawis for haybah to keep out of the entryway of offices and homes and businesses, that which is, is of a nefarious and bad energy. So all of them have a haqqaiq and a reality and many spiritual beings that accompany them and bring a barakah and blessings from unseen realms of Allah in except towards faith. These are signs of faith, immense faith in, in days where everything is now, no, 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 this doesn't exist. And those are the same people who are extremely crazy and sick and under attack saying that. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam How do we purify our love from selfish intentions or crookedness? Purify your love from selfish intentions and crookedness. Alhamdulillah, keep with the meditation and listen to the talks, be of service, give and support. All of that is very difficult for selfish person. These are all selfless acts. So when we ask for you to do and to give and to support, those are selfless. So when you go and give your khidmat and your time and your ability, those come against selfishness because selfishness wants all the time and resources for itself. Selfless means they want to be of service. That is the remedy against that sickness. So that's why the tariqah is built on khidmat. Khidmat brings a rahmah, it brings immense ocean. Our whole life is based on the, the realities of khidmat. So we live a life of service to be recognized by Allah and recognized by Sayyidina Muhammad and that's how you get the imdad, that's how you get the madad. Why would they send somebody madad if they don't need it, right? So the, the one who needs it the most is the one whom is in service so that they can fulfill their service, Ya Allah, give me a madad and support. Then they start to send an immense amount of madad and things begin to open and food begins to appear and resources begin to, to flow, that's madad. But for madad just for nothing, just because you're sitting down and you're asking for madad is, okay, well they're all, oh okay, uh, what, what do you need the madad for? So the life is about the khidmat that I'm trying to do and uh, accomplish and uh, to get this to open, send me madad. Then boom, it begins to open and things begin to accomplish and happen. And then now you want to keep that, you want to keep their vision on you to do these good things. We still don't have a van in the UK with thousands of people showing up at Naqshbandi events. We can't get one person to go around and give food, why, why is that? You're scared? What is it going to take? We have a lot of generous people so it doesn't take much. You know the Mispah started in Chicago, he took his minivan, went to a food place and says, uh, here's our logo, here's our picture, can you give us some food to, to distribute to the poor? And they picked up uh, some crates of food and they distributed it to the poor. And there's all these food managers that don't want to throw things away. I think the guys described to me they don't have that system in the UK, um, there's no homeless people anywhere, they all get a house. Because <laughs> here in, in the US and Canada we have homeless people, they're sleeping on the streets. But they, they said in the UK they have such housing, they don't have homeless areas where people are encamped and, and homeless. But still these foods can be given to food banks. So if you, if you don't have the homeless, we, we now want to start in Vancouver food banks. So we're trying to figure out our licensing and paperwork 
to get a food bank going where we'll open up the door and say, here's food bank and get your food, you know, five days a week, come and get food. So I'm sure there's food banks in the UK that need a Muslim food bank so with Muslim names that will service everyone but at least to show that we're there and present that we want to go and, and give the food to the food banks if you can't give it on the street. So it's a matter of getting and picking up food and driving it to the Muslim food banks or, or food banks that are in need of food. You do that one, two, three times and then we'll send the money for the van once we see that the person is of service and doing the work that they have to do. So alhamdulillah there's so many opportunities, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Do women shaykhs exist or only men shaykhs? Forgive me for my ignorance. Yeah. Yeah, there are, there are shaykhahs that are like licensed through the tariqahs you find mainly in the Middle East. In the, in the Western world, no and it's not liked for women to do da'wah. And in the Western world if, if a woman comes in front and begin to do da'wah then sitting with 20 men is against the sharia of Allah So that not liked and… There's no need for, for women to try to attract men to tariqah because you fall in the trap of them really not liking the tariqah but liking you. And they're coming for the, the female not for the, the reality, so there's not a need for that. So that, that's you know under circumstances that the, they may sort of sit in an association with the, with the female who's related to the shaykh that's very few now have that ability and that understanding. But in general in the West it's, it's not… it's not… Uh, not commonplace because of all of the problems you'll run into with men coming into association and then a woman giving advice to ten men sitting in the room is against the, the way of Prophet and then would be frowned upon upon other Islamic communities. So not, not necessary. With everything online What's the… what would be the need for a female association when everybody's having their own association in the comfort of your own couch by yourself? Because the shaykh is teaching, there's no men around and it's just a sort of one-on-one -on -one online. Because of this online it took out the need for anything like that. And we're of, a, of an understanding that it's best not to go to big associations because of the, the pandemic exists within humans, not the virus. It's the human pandemic. As soon as they sit with 10 people they become confused and each one uh, giving advice and each one negating one advice. So it's best for people just to you know do their practices, connect their heart and watch it live, put your goggles on, put your nice headphones, listen and get the very unique style of teaching. And we have mashaAllah probably the best, best zikrs and nasheeds online from all tariqahs with all the sound systems and all of the beautiful voices and recitations. So uh, why anyone has to go anywhere else? My personal opinion. SubhanAllah wa rahmatullahi 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 wa r